Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills. With that, let's get up to Buffalo. Standing by at New Era Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Ah, uh, yes, nothing quite like Buffalo in January as we welcome you inside a snowy New Era Field on the shores of Lake Erie. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and for both of these teams that we're going to see, Charles, the future is kind of right now. You know, this is something you only see a handful of times in an NFL season where you've got a rookie quarterback versus a rookie quarterback. And I think a lot of that has to do with the era we're in now. Because our dads, they didn't see rookie quarterbacks go against each other. In fact, it could be two, three years before they even saw the playing field. Nowadays, you get drafted, they expect you to play earlier, and these guys as competitors, they'll take their lumps early, but they'd rather be on the field. On to get us started now, the kicker, Chris Boswell. And off we go from New Era Field. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. They go play action here on first down. Out to his left. Now he'll pull it down. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. Quickly now, here's the Buffalo offense. And the play of this offensive line is going to be so important in this game because we saw the sack a minute or so ago. They've got to be able to give their guy time to throw. That means communication and being physical is vital. Otherwise, this could be a long game. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And an alley to run. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. But just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. He'll drop to throw. And the grab by Croft. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. Bud Dupree came out of the University of Kentucky determined to let everyone know that they play football there as well as basketball. A terrific pass rusher off the edge. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Second and nine now. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, 
They're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Back to throw. And this one caught by Beasley. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Well, as they come out here to set up shop for this next drive, let's talk about the NFC Championship game coming up. San Francisco hosting Green Bay. It was the road teams winning in the wild card round, Seattle, Minnesota, but the home teams bounce back in the divisional round. 49ers beating the Vikings and the Pack beating Go! Seattle and Lambeau. So sets up a great Go! NFC Championship game. And a rematch of their regular season meeting that San Francisco dominated. Don't think Green Bay has forgotten that one. They have not traveled well to the West Coast this season, losing at the Chargers, losing at San Francisco. I think they'll play much better in this one. Aaron Rodgers burning to get back to the Super Bowl yet again. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Hodges here on second down. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And he is out up around the 15-yard line. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Now they have a little more space to maneuver from the 15, first and 10. On first and 10 is Connor. He'll rumble for about six, up across the 20 to the 22. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The last run got six, now second and four. They'll run with the NC State man, it's Jalen Samuels. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Four yards the pick up, first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Looking to throw on first down with Hodges. Got an open man, it's Washington. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Now this pass to Vance McDonald complete. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, to have that dagger play, to have that play and just finish them off right now, because I think they'd love to get that big advantage early. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. From 
the gun on third down. Hodges. And that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Andre Roberts is deep for Buffalo. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Let's go! As Buffalo gets ready for their next drive, you know, if you're a Bills fan, I think you got to be pleased with what happened this season. Yes, the disappointment in the wild card round to Houston, everybody knows about that, but the win total jumps from 6 to 10, and bottom line, they got in the playoffs. They broke an almost double decade, you know, drought in the playoffs two seasons ago. Remember, they went... But then they took the step back last year because you just mentioned it, only six wins in 2018. But to get back to 10, and this feels like they've got a pretty good base going where they're going to be involved in playoff action for a while to come now. Quarterback Josh Allen found a runner in Devin, Devin Singletary. The defense continues to play well, led by Tredavious White, who's an all-pro corner. I like the foundation that they built there with Sean McDermott. I think they'll contend for the playoffs for many years to come with this team. And yeah, disappointing loss after being up 16 to nothing against Houston. But I think going down the road, Buffalo's going to be a factor. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. He'll look to throw. Short throw hauled in by Croft. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn it into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. They were ahead of schedule after the gain of seven on first down, but the defense does not budge on second and third. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. The Bills send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. Special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked out and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Next drive coming up for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not sure what was going on this past season in the Keystone State of Pennsylvania, but you think about the Eagles and these Steelers and the injury bug that bit both of them, it's really hard to fathom. If it's germane to the Steelers, though, the dreadful start really began with the injury to Ben Roethlisberger, lost for the year after two weeks and things, although they obviously picked things up later in the year, Charles, started to go south right there. I think their head coach, Mike Tomlin, not going to win head coach of the year, but to me, deserves great consideration because one and four start, then they won eight out of ten, and no Ben Roethlisberger quarterback. In fact, they went through, as we would count it, essentially four quarterbacks this year when you count Joshua Dobbs in the preseason before he was traded to Jacksonville. You end up with an undrafted rookie, Devlin Hodges, out of Sanford. The duck guy, duck dynasty himself. But this team... 30th in total offense. They've got a lot of work to do next year. But if they get Roethlisberger back, get a healthy James Conner back, 
they'll be right back in the hunt for the AFC North title. So even though Pittsburgh's had a lot of great playoff years under Mike Tomlin, you think maybe this was his most impressive coaching job? To me, this team could have collapsed and just gone totally south with the 1-4 and four start and all the injuries that we were noting. They didn't do that. They continued to press and were actually in the hunt in the thick of the playoff race until a loss to Buffalo at home. I believe it was on a Sunday or a Monday night, and that pretty much knocked them out of it. And remember, they lost their first-round pick. They gave that away in the trade for Minka Fitzpatrick, which some people questioned at the time. Turned out okay for him this year. Turned out better than okay, and while they didn't make the playoffs, Minka Fitzpatrick became an all-pro player. Finding his role in Pittsburgh, he'll be able to be at that level for many years to come for the Steelers. Second and ten, it's Hodges again. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was going for the tight end, Nick Vanette. And that takes us from second to third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. And Oliver coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. To return is Roberts. That one in the books as a 64-yard punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Well, Charles, as this offense comes out here, let's talk about the AFC Championship game coming up. Kansas City hosting Tennessee. The Chiefs, the winner over the Texans in the divisional round. But even before they took the field, they got a surprise gift on Saturday night with those Titans winning in Baltimore to set up the unexpected matchup. But sometimes a gift isn't exactly a gift because they went from thinking they had to chase around Lamar Jackson to having to fortify themselves against Derrick Henry and the 250 pounds of man coming at him running the football. And he fires one that's intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Set, ready? 60 or. Watch the run, watch the run. Snap. On first down, Connor. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Jordan Phillips is the one on the stop. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. On second down, Connor looking for space. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. 
Gets this to his running back. That's Jalen Samuels. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And this one is right down the middle. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces them to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. And we got to get to the ball, team. We got to get to the ball. Let's keep moving. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. They'll break the huddle. Come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here's second and eight. And he's going to have the connection to Foster. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Give him 18 on that one as the Bills are going to have a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. He's got Smith here. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 42. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. This quarterback now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. They'll set up a throw. Open man here is Foster. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. He'll buy some time right. And now he's going to use his legs. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 18. 
The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced the ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. First trip to the red zone for the Bills. They have a first and 10 at the 18. They run with Gore out of the shotgun. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It was Mike Hilton up to make the tackle. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now it's Gore. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Bills on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. They'll look to throw. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, T.J. Watt, there on the coverage. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Steven Field Hauschka goal forthcoming for Steven Hauschka. A 27-yard attempt. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And the Bills are going to tie the game at three. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Field goals, all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They start with a give to Connor, and the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box, and guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Stepping up, he'll try and run. He'll get five out of the keeper, but now it's third down. The Steelers on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and six. Here's Hodges looking to throw. This is Johnson. He's got it. 
And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. Down. Ten Lobo. 65. 65. 65. They'll run on first down. It's Connor, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. On second down, here's Hodges. And his throw here is incomplete. James Washington was the intended target. And now it's third down. Had an open man that time. but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. On third down, Hodges. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That goes for a gain of 31. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great, and what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. On first down, here's Hodges. His throw incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Again on second and ten, it's Hodges. Now he's trying for Smith Schuster, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Jordan Poyer. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, CD, with the end of the season comes the announcement of the All-Pro team, and everybody was like, wait a second, Christian McCaffrey's listed twice. Is that a mistake? No, he got it both at running back and flex. Pretty impressive. Very impressive because I think a lot of people thought that if you have a running back and a flex position, that maybe Christian McCaffrey would go into the flex because he catches the ball so well, and he would go ahead and elevate the big guy out of Tennessee, Derrick Henry, to the All-Pro running back. Henry ends up being a second-team guy, but McCaffrey deserves being first-team running back as well as first-team flex. He had a tremendous, spectacular year. And as you might imagine, Baltimore leads away five players named the All-Pro selection. Of course, leading the way for them, the quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Yes, and, and rightly so, and I fully expect him to be named the MVP when we get to NFL honors right before the Super Bowl. He's going to sweep all of those, and he deserves it carried that team throughout the season and got better in their bigger games. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Here's Gore now running out of the gun. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? fake they'll look to throw they'll roll him out right now the ball comes loose Let's go, Bring it up. a play 
plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw here. Got a man. It's Brown. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. On the toss, it's Gore. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there. And now it's third down at inches. The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. And here's carry number 10 for Frank Gore. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First down, Gore, and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. From the midfield strike, they look to throw. He's got goal. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Bills on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. They're gonna look to throw. He can run for it, and he will. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A good decision in the end. The pull it and run gets him nine yards and a first. Someone knew exactly where he needed to get to pick up that first down now. I'm not so sure about the technique in getting there, but he went for it, and he got it. Exactly. He knew where he needed to get, because remember, if he slides, when that derriere dips, if you will, that play's over. The derriere dips, I like that one. Yeah, been working on it for a little bit. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. throw here out to Brown and he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25 it's a loss of a yard there and now second down if you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball you're cool with the completion 
Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Back to the ground game here. Gore. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. So first and second down went in the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. Now back to throw. And that's caught by Beasley. 15 yards that time. They had a Buffalo first. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. This quarterback now, 13 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. They'll set up to throw. Flushed out right. And he will score. Touchdown, Buffalo. A 12-yard touchdown run. And the Bills have taken the lead. They've already been on record as saying, hey, if our rookie quarterback's going to tuck it and run on a scramble, we kind of hold our breath. Well, that was a maybe no, 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 yes, as he's <laughs> able to get into the end zone. Are you saying he's got to learn where the line is about whether you keep your eyes downfield, try and find a receiver, or you tuck it and go? And I think he's there's going to be some growing pains with that. I think in this case, he made the right decision. And we know he's got the speed. He showed it there. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And the lead is now 10 to three. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it was capped off by a 12 yard touchdown run. to send this one away following the score. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things oh, off. That's the only way you can get it done. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Now a pass that's taken in by Smith-Schuster. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Come on, 
The Steelers on third down. Two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. He'll try and run for it with counter. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Looking to throw on first down with Hodges. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Now the intended receiver out of the backfield was Jalen Samuels. That'll bring up second down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home. And they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync. Only way to play good defense. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 47. Now Hodges on first down. That's complete to his running back, Connor. It's a gain of seven, and it'll bring up a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Watch the pass. Watch the pass. <laughs> now it's Hodges. He finds his man, Johnson. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. it to Smith Schuster and he will lose yardage here to the 31 yard line they'll wind up losing three yards here and that'll make this a second and 13 they completed the screen on the perimeter but boy that was textbook defense exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Our score, 10 to three, with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. Coming up at halftime, while the two of us head for warmer areas of the press box, we'll be sending you to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And it'll bring up third down. Third and long, it's Hodges, and it's complete. He gets this one to Washington, and he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 15-yard line. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen.
A first opportunity for the Steelers in the red zone. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. On first and 10, it's Hodges. Complete to Washington. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Again, Hodges. And he's got it, and he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown grab. As they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown-interception ratio is, what, 3-1 to one for the best quarterbacks? But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. Boswell good with the extra point, And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. That one in the books as a 12-play drive, and it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Peace as the kicks away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard let's go, line. Let's go, let's go. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. A couple completions, you string them together, could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And an alley to run. They'll try and run it. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. He'll drop to throw. And a grab by Croft. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Second and one. Drops it underneath the goal. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Yeah. 
So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Bills have come back to regain the lead. So we will not go into the lockers tied. We do have a leader in the clubhouse, so to speak. Yeah, it's only three points. Doesn't seem like much, but it looms big the way that they got it done right before the half ended. Now after the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room. Start over. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. The snow certainly making conditions difficult, and it's not likely to get better anytime soon as we turn it right back over to Brandon and Charles. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. has changed since we left you at halftime. The snow still continuing to fall as we are back underway. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them guys we're right there just not playing as well as we need to let's pick it up and we still have a chance to win this game yeah they do we'll see if they can pick it up they go play action now Hodges and his throw is incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. And it's second down. I think he's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Watch that in. Cut his right. Cut his right. Again on second and 10, it's Hodges. Got an open man. It's Washington. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 47. On first down, here's Hodges going for the deep.